Hi everyone, it's Marissa from BumblebeeApothecary.com and today I'm bringing you along while I'm working on a couple of really important things that I'm needing to get done. So I have a couple of really important things that I need to get done. The first one is to make this disappear. All of this beef fat. I have beef fat and I have a bunch of pork fat in another freezer over here. I have pork fat and beef fat galore and I really need to make it go away. And not really, I don't mean go away, like be gone. I just mean convert it, you know, so that it's not needing to be stored in the freezer. I want to render it into tallow and lard so that I can keep it in jars and use it in cooking and making things and all that good stuff. And one of the reasons that I need to do this is actually that I need to free up freezer space because we have some lambs coming that we bought. So cut and wrapped lamb meat from two lambs and then also we have a whole beef coming either the end of this month or the beginning of next month. I'm not sure exactly when, but a whole beef is coming. And so we need freezer space for all of that meat to come. And I need to make sure that I clear out the freezer, use up the last bits of different things that I can, which a big part of that is just rendering this fat. So that's one of the things I'm working on today and it's a several day process. Obviously, as many of you know, who have rendered your own fat, it takes a while. Plus I have a number of bags and packages that I need to get through. So for the next number of weeks, I'm just gonna be rendering batches back to back, getting all this done. So right now I'm just pulling some, I'm looking for the right bag of, of pig fat, pork fat that I want to start making into some lard, and then I'm also pulling out some beef fat to start that rendering as well. For the pork fat, I'm just gonna be doing a dry rendering in the oven at a low temperature. I like to do around 200 to 250 degrees Fahrenheit or so, and this pork fat is coming just straight out of the freezer, frozen, and so it looks really big and tall and like kind of intimidating in that roasting pan, but don't worry. As it warms up and softens, it'll fall down and it becomes much more manageable and fits in there much more nicely. So what I do is I just put it in a roasting pan in the oven at that low temperature. And then as I see the lard collecting in the bottom of the pan, I will just pour it off. And I will show you that in a little bit once I get to that step. But for right now, I'm just sticking it in the oven at the low temperature and just kind of forgetting about it for now. And then I'll just keep an eye on it later on. For the beef fat, I'm going to be doing this in a crock pot. I like to do the beef rendering outside because especially for doing this much of it and for this long, I don't want my house smelling like beef fat for weeks. So I just really like rendering beef fat outside. So I have my crock pot out there. So I'm going to do the wet rendering for the beef fat for making that into tallow. And I have rendering videos on my channel. As many of you know, I show a dry rendering with beef fat video. That was one of the very first videos that I ever made on my channel. So it's a pretty old one. So you have to excuse some of that. And then I have another updated one where I show the wet rendering method, how to render and purify tallow to make it really odorless and light colored. It's a very gentle rendering method. So that's the one that I'm doing right now. I also have one, a more recent video where I showed how to render pork, I talked about different ways that you can do that to make lard. So rendering is, is I'm pretty, I get pretty excited about it and I like doing a lot of it and it's a big part of Bumblebee Apothecary, you could say. So as you can see, I put the raw fat into my crock pot and then I sprinkle some salt onto it and then add some water and then add a lid. As, since it's going in there frozen, it's very stiff and the lid can't go down, but as it warms up and melts, it'll soften and it will go down and then the lid will be able to fit all the way. And I do like putting a lid on for the wet rendering method because I don't want the water to evaporate too quickly. And like I said, if you wanna see all the details of exactly how to do these different rendering processes, I'll have those other rendering videos linked down below and you can easily find them on my channel as well. 
And then at this point, I'm just going to leave that plugged in on low and I'll come back and check on it periodically, sometimes adding water as needed. The other thing that I'm working on today is we have a, an oversupply of eggs right now. So we have a new batch of laying hens that recently started laying and they are really laying. And so it's a good problem to have, but I also don't want any of this to go to waste and I want to use them while they're fresh. And so we've been getting creative and coming up with lots of different ways to use a lot of eggs. And one of those things is pudding. So I did another more basic pudding a while back and I like pudding because it's tasty. Everybody likes it and it's one of the things that you can make and you can put a lot of egg yolks into pudding. So this time I'm making tapioca pudding and I'm just starting that by putting the tapioca pearls into a pot and then the first step is to add some water and let them sit for about 30 minutes. And then once those tapioca pearls have sat then I'm just gonna continue on with the rest of the recipe. And while I'm doing this, I would love to hear from you guys. What are your favorite ways to use eggs? What are your favorite egg recipes? What are your favorite ways to use them? Have you ever had an excess of eggs? And if so, what did you do to use them up or to preserve them? Preserving them is something I haven't really gotten into. I've seen people who freeze dry them and that looks really neat. Um, I don't have a freeze dryer at this point but someday down the road, I think that would be great to get one. And that would be a really nice way to just preserve the excess and use them down the road. But for right now, we're just eating them. We're just finding lots of different ways to use lots and lots of eggs and especially the egg yolks in recipes. And so you can see I am going way overboard. I did go ahead and triple this recipe from the basic tapioca pudding recipe. And that one calls for two eggs. So then tripled, that would be six eggs. I am doing, I think, two dozen egg yolks and then saving the whites from about six to beat and fold those in towards the end. But I'm putting a lot of egg yolks into here. Some of the other things that we've been doing is making homemade ice cream and adding lots of extra egg yolks to that, Russian custard, anything like that. So then once I have all the egg yolks that I decide I'm gonna use in this, I go ahead and add them to the pot, beat them lightly before adding them to the pot and then stir them. And I'm going to gently bring this up to a boil at about medium heat. And then I didn't do the greatest job while I was cooking this tapioca pudding. As you can see, um, I, you're supposed to constantly stir it as it's coming to a boil and I tried to multitask, so I let it sit a little bit, and so it's not as perfectly smooth and nice as <laughs> you could hope, but that's okay, it's still gonna be tasty, we're still gonna enjoy it. And then I did have those egg whites from those six eggs that I kept, and so I'm whipping those with part of the sucanat, so it's unrefined cane sugar that still has all the vitamins and minerals and everything in it. Whipping that, those egg whites till they're soft peaks and then gently folding that into the tapioca, adding some vanilla right at the end, stirring it in. It smells really good. It's going to be a really nice nutrient dense, delicious dessert chock full of lots of egg yolks. And now it's time to take care of that pork that's been rendering or pork fat that's been rendering in the oven. So. I am figuring out how I want to do this here. What I ended up doing that worked quite well was to just grab the lid that goes to the roasting pan. So while it was in the oven, I did not have a lid on it with dry rendering that I find that works just fine to just keep the lid off. But I'm going to grab the lid and then I put it on and then I sort of tilt it so that there's an opening. And then that holds those big pieces of pork fat in there while I pour off what has rendered into a glass jar. And then I can tell that there's still quite a bit of fat of uh, lard that can come out of there. So I'm gonna take the lid, put that aside, and just stick it back in the oven. And then as I see more lard collecting, I'll just keep doing that until it's not really rendering out anymore. And here's some of that nice lard that I poured off. The pork crackling pieces, the pork fat that's already had the lard rendered out of it, we just give to our chickens and they love it. 
They gobble those down so quickly, there's nothing left. I think it's a really nice cooler weather thing for them to be able to have to eat too. And then here's the beef fat that's currently rendering outside, turning into tallow. So you can see that there's still a lot of raw pieces in there, but it has fallen down into the crock pot and it's the lid can fit nicely. And so I just keep an eye on that. And then as needed, I will add more water to replace any that has evaporated out because I want to make sure that there's enough water that stays in there so that it can render nicely without becoming too dry. That's the beauty of the wet rendering method is that it keeps water in there so that no part of it ever gets too hot while it's rendering. While we're talking about rendering all this fat, I wanted to show you this new deep fat fryer that I recently got. If you've been with me before, you'll remember we had a different one that was actually gifted to us and I'm not sure what all it was made from. I wasn't always 100% comfortable in case there might've been Teflon or something in it. I just wasn't sure. So I really like this one. It's all stainless steel. So you don't have to worry about any of that nonstick chemical or anything like that. And it's bigger, so you can make bigger batches of things at once. So for our family, that's really nice, makes it faster and easier. And so I've really been liking this one. We've been using it to make fries, French fries, and it's been working very nicely. I'll have this one linked down below in case you're looking for an all stainless steel deep fat fryer too. So that batch of lard is done. This is how much we ended up getting from that one. And then we just, like I said, gave those crackling pieces to the chickens. And then um, we did end up washing out that roasting pan, but I'm actually going to get the next bag of pork fat out and start over and get another batch going. And then the beef tallow is also ready to strain. It's done rendering. I actually let this one go for a few days altogether, replacing water as needed. And so I didn't, so in my tallow rendering and uh, lard videos. I talk about different things that you can do like whizzing everything up with an immersion blender if your fat is in pretty big chunks, things like that. I didn't bother this time just because I have so much fat to go through and so I didn't worry about it. I just left it big because I, I just have a lot to get through. I need to make it easy, doable, quick and so I just let it render for about three days. Didn't worry about whizzing it up or anything, replaced water as needed, and so now I'm just straining it through a metal strainer. Also what I'm doing is I'm planning on using this tallow for cooking, and so I'm not doing a second step for purifying. I'm just gonna do this one final step, and then I'm gonna get some more raw beef fat in there and get another batch going, because I have a lot to work through if I'm gonna clean out my freezers in time for getting the meat that's coming. So I'm just straining this out and then I'll feed those fatty, gelatinous, uh, cartilage, you know, whatever they are, connective tissue, <laughs> whatever those things are that are left behind. I'm gonna give those to the chickens as well. They really like them. And here is my bowl of strained tallow. It's still hot, so it's still liquid. And I am going to actually stick that into the refrigerator and let that solidify. And then after that, I will pop it out and I'll show you what it looks like when it's finished. And then I'm going ahead and getting that next batch of pork fat going. So I have another big batch of those same kinds of pork fat pieces. I'm gonna stick them into the roasting pan. And as you can see, just like before, they start off piled very tall. They're all frozen and kind of stuck together. And that's okay. It looks very odd, like how is that gonna render properly? But don't worry, I just keep an eye on it as they soften and thaw, then I move them around so that they're all actually in the roasting pan like they should be. And then you can see them here, how they did just nicely collapse down into the roasting pan. And so it was no problem at all. And with this batch, I actually got a lot more lard than I did with the last batch. So I have a lot I'm gonna pour off and put it in the pitcher at first and then let it cool a little bit and then put it into glass jars and I'm just gonna stick those in the refrigerator. And here's that bowl of beef tallow that I had. So it's nice and solidified in the refrigerator. So I'm just gonna pop that out of the bowl. There's some brown water left from that wet rendering. And so I'm actually going to just rinse the cake of tallow off to kind of clean that off. And then I will also scrape the sediment that's kind of collected at the bottom of the tallow cake too. So I just have pure tallow left behind and I just put that 
I give that to my chickens too, the scrapings. Save that for them. Rinse off the tallow cake so that it's nice and clean. And then I just leave it on this cutting board to dry in the air for a few days to make sure that there's no water left on it. And then at this point, it can either go into bags in the refrigerator or the freezer, or if I know I'm gonna use it more quickly than that, then I just will actually just leave it on this cutting board and take pieces off as I need to. I actually think that our deep fat fryer could use quite a bit more tallow in it, so I am going to probably be using a good portion of this to go into our deep fat fryer, and that will fill that up nicely. All right, I hope that you enjoyed coming along and seeing as I got a couple of really important things that I needed to done, worked on rendering some fat. I still have quite a bit left to go, but I'm just gonna keep repeating those processes until I have all the pork fat and all the beef fat rendered and my freezers cleared out, ready for the new meat to come. And then we're also gonna continue just working through those eggs and eating lots of eggs. Like I said before, I would love your guys' ideas on ways to use lots of eggs, and if you've tried any egg preservation methods and how that worked for you, I'd love to hear in the comments, so let me know. Make sure to check out that description box for links to the things like the deep fat fryer that I recently found that I really like. I did quite a bit of research before I decided on one, so hopefully that saves you some time if you were looking for something similar. I also have free eBooks, meal plans, different things like that. So check those out if you're interested. And if you did like this video, please give it a thumbs up, share it with anybody that you think would find it interesting or helpful. And if you are new to my channel, please hit that subscribe button. I get out new videos every week on nourishing recipes and natural living. Thanks so much for watching. See you next time. Bye.